Hi, I'm Beth. I'm 65, you're 65 or older, or 60 with lots of sun damage. Anyway, we are going to explore the perils and the wonders of old age. Please join me on our journey. Episode 6, recorded on September 18, 2019. Hi, it's Beth here. I told you I got a joke and I got a doozy. And really, what I want to know is what happened to joke telling. This used to be a major art form. It was a way to talk to anybody. Got a joke? Yeah, I want to hear it. And in, in New York, when I was growing up as a kid, the 50s, we were swimming in really good joke tellers. They were, they were funny. Everybody was funny. But the best by far was a French guy named Jean-Luc. First of all, a French guy telling a joke is fun. This guy had everything. He had a French accent. He's actually from France. French accent, wore a beret, and he was a bum. An actual bum. Like you can't ask for more from a joke teller. The guy had everything. And his turf was even classy. He was at the corner, the left corner of the United Nations building. This guy, and how we knew him, it's a crazy story. My dad had befriended this man named Bill, and he was from Canada. Bill was a really nice guy, and he was a diplomat, and he worked at the United Nations. And he'd come in, stroll in about six times a year, and before he'd enter the building, there'd be Jean-Luc wearing his beret, telling Bill the funniest joke. Bill would laugh out loud, which he needed to do, pay the man well, and they were really close. I mean, it was a deep, deep, abiding friendship, and it went on for years. Well, the other thing that was very good about Bill was that he was an incredible drunk. Very gregarious. Such a fun guy. And my dad said that he actually had a wooden leg, which was praise from Caesar. My dad knew. So, Bill would, you know, when he he breathed into town and the first night in, they would go out. My dad and Bill would go out and have a great dinner. That was not the important part. The important part was the first thing before anything else happened, my dad would sit Bill down and he would kill himself. My dad was a great salesman. Kill himself trying to sell Bill a 4,000 pound professional printing press, printing press that would look sensational in his living room in Canada. Bill would listen intently, every word. Promised my dad that he would take this under serious consideration. They would shake on it and then commenced to serious drinking, all on my father's generous expense account. The first glass was always dedicated to John Luke and whatever his joke was. That was the toast. So right now I'm kind of wavering about which joke to tell you that John Luke told. I think I'm going to start, there'll be many. I mean, I got the whole repertoire, but I think I want to start you with the cleanest one I can think of because you could actually go out and tell this joke to other people. But people are, they're dying to your jokes. I know it. I can feel it in the wind. I can feel that people are really missing joker, joke tellers and laughing with somebody. So I'm going to tell you this really clean one. And it is funny. So, okay. This is, this is it. It's the story of these two guys. Raj and Bob. Best friends. In fact, their mothers were best friends. They were born two days apart. They lived across the street from each other. It was so intense. Absolutely so intense. They went to school together, of course. They sat on the bus together. And they even went into World War II together. The army couldn't separate them. They didn't want to. It was too good. Now this, this part you just won't believe. But this is true. They married twins. And then they took over their, their parents.
parents' old homes, the parents went to Florida, left them the homes right across the street from each other. So there they were. It was perfect. This part, you'll, you'll believe, they did work in the same factory together. They never had a fight. They never had a harsh word. It was, it was different for their wives who couldn't stand this. I mean, they just thought it was weird. You know, why couldn't they be close to their husbands? So, you know, it was all that, you know, marital discourse or what, whatever you call it, marital uh, pots flying around the room. But they had each other. Raj and Bob were a team. They had each other. They were still committed. They, they had kids and grandkids, and to their wives' dismay or disgust, they named the kids after each other, even the girls. I mean, it was just almost too much. But you really couldn't fault them because it was real. And anyway, it went on and on. And then, unthinkably, one of them died. It was Bob. Nobody expected Bob to die. Just like that at 85. He drops dead. It was impossible to believe. Raj is bereft. Completely bereft. Beyond inconsolable. He can't sleep. He can't eat. He starts losing weight. Everything's going to hell. Nothing's helping him. He's, he's beyond it. He's sleeping all the time now. Everyone is really worried. Till one night, Bob comes to him in a dream. He really did. He says, Raj, Raj, hey, it's me. What, what are you so worried about? I've got meat. Oh my God, Bob sits up in bed. Can't believe it, he's so excited. He says, Raj, tell me, tell me what's going on. Tell me, tell me everything. Raj is like, it's the life, man. I, I got it all. I eat the best food. I gain no weight. I don't work. Don't have to. The weather, spectacular. The view, I can't even begin. It's out of this world. Raj says, wow, Bob, you really, you really do have it made. Bob laughs and he goes, you haven't, even heard, you haven't heard the least of it. None of it. Raj is like, what? 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 Bob goes, it's the women. It's the females. The sex is non-stop. It's non-stop. I mean, and it's through the roof. It's, I never in my life just like, Bob, oh my God, you made it. You're in heaven. Bob says, are you kidding? Gosh, are you crazy? I'm a rabbit in Montana. It's a good one, right? Tell it to anybody. Anybody. And yeah, I'm starting to think I spend a lot of time talking about rabbits, which I'm not going to deal with. It's not that bad out of them problems. But anyway, back to Jean-Luc, the author of this great junk. So Bill, still meeting every single time he comes into town, always a little stressful when he comes into town in February because it's freezing. You know, the rain's pelting, it's always icy, oh, the black, stupid stuff that you get your foot stuck in, the ice on the side of the road. It's terrible. So, you know, Bill's always a little nervous in February. Because they called it the elements. Everybody was worried about the elements, which means really cold weather to a guy in the 50s. That was the word for it. So, Bill was no exception. Get really nervous up in the cab and just every single year in the winter, just Try so hard to see Jean-Luc and he'd find him. Well, February happened again. And this time it was the worst February on record. Freezing, icy rain pelting down. You couldn't even see. So Bill jumps out of the cab, looking with his eyes. I mean, it's, it's hurting his eyes. He looks up, trying to see 
Jean-Luc, looking all over. He can't find him. He runs up to the corner, screaming, Jean-Luc, Jean-Luc, with a French accent. That's how worried he is. He starts speaking to him in French. Jean-Luc, Jean-Luc, like that, just frantic. Anyway, can't find him. He's nowhere. Screaming, screaming. Can't believe his eyes. He can't see him anywhere. Just practically falls down. Creates quite a commotion. Other men are starting to gather around him because he is frantic. Finally, another bum comes up to Bill and he says, Are you looking for John Luke? Dead silence. Bill says, Yeah. Where is he? The bum just looks at him. He goes, Don't tell me he's dead. Just don't tell me he's dead. And the bum laughs and he says, Dead? No, he's vacationing in Bermuda. This is a true story. Absolutely a true story. That's how good this guy was at being a bum. He was like a billionaire bum. Everybody loved him. He, you know, that's what I think. He told jokes, lots of guys, put the money in his pocket, and went vacationing in Bermuda. You gotta love it. I'll tell you one more thing. You know, John Luke's stories are gonna, the jokes are gonna come rolling in. But meanwhile, I gotta tell you a beauty tip. It's a good one. You, you gotta figure out how to get more sleep. I mean, this is not working for me. I can't figure it out. I can't sleep. But I, I've had like three nights in the past year that I've slept eight hours. And I wake up and I look like 10 years younger. So I actually look my age which is perfect. So if you can figure it out, just do it. And then you won't even be, you'll be spared that middle of the night stupid hellhole that you can go into playing back all the mistakes you ever made in your life. I mean, I, I can, I'm a professional at this. I can personally go as low as thank you notes I didn't write when I was 12 years old. But I've, I, I packed that on top of like so much other stuff that it actually hurts. And the self-loathing, it just, I can go on for hours with this. And I can make myself a complete wreck. I mean, maybe I'm not as good as Zelda Fitzgerald because F. Scott said that every hour for Zelda was 4 a.m. And I can't say I'm working that hard at it. So, and she was a sweet person, but every hour was 4 a.m. for her. So, I got one more little beauty tip. This isn't great, but it's doable. Which is, if you're not wearing stockings, which she does, no one. And it's not time for, like, uh, those tights, those black things that we wear all the time. There's this little period of time where you're, maybe you don't wear dresses, but I still do because I'm hot. So you got a dress on, you put a little baby oil on both of your legs, and I swear to God, in the right light, it creates a pretty nice fake glow. It's fake. But in the right light, it looks good. It looks like you're almost alive. So I do that one. Well, listen, I, I gotta go. That's it for tonight, because people have said to me, that I gotta make it shorter. And they're right. And I'm listening to them. And so I'm just gonna shorten this one up and I'll get back with you. And I got a bunch more stuff, but I really don't wanna wear you out. So I'll be back. <laughs>